Action Park Media. Pump rules to Vegas and everywhere in between, it's time to party with Sheena Shea. This is Shenanigans. And now, here's your host, Sheena Shea. Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening. It's Shenanigans with Sheena and Jamie. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm refreshed. I'm back from a three day weekend in San Diego, which was so nice and needed. Yeah, and it must have been so nice to get back down there. It was. And it was the first weekend that we've had without any help. So oh, as much that? as I missed like my parents and I wanted to spend Father's Day with my dad, we saw him the next day. We did dinner with him last night. It was nice to know that like I'm okay doing this on my own, like down Good. in San Diego. So oh, and of course you are. Yeah. No, I know totally. But it's like, you know, we have her in LA full time mm-hmm. and my mom is here at the drop of a hat anytime I need anything. So being down in San Diego, we're like, okay, you know, if we start splitting our time more, like we don't have help down here but all of my neighbors are so sweet when they heard me say that they're like if you guys want to go to the gym like we can watch her just you know make sure she's fed and we'll take her for like an hour or whatever would you even allow that at this point I don't think you would I don't know I'm like you know like Mike and Cheryl I love them and those are like her other grandparents like Mm -hmm. her grandma and grandpa down in San Diego but haven't left her with anyone else yet I know so I don't know how about this let's do a trial you and Brock go on a date night and you leave her with me. (laughs) I mean, I've left her with Tom and Ariana. Oh, did you? Yeah. We did a little lunch date. Oh. Which you guys will see in probably like six months. How did they do? It was really cute. Well, Ariana... I mean, I can't get into it too much, but from what I heard, Ariana was very hands-on and Sandoval just kind of watched, Mm -hmm. but he also brought a guitar and they sang an acoustic version of Good as Gold. Oh my God. So, yeah. Hey, your mommy sang this song. (laughs) Yeah, it was really cute. That was also for not very long. Speaking of their house and like music with them, so upon like entering their house, yeah. That front room, whatever it's called, is like my dream room. They have a piano. They have a guitar. They have like this awesome, like well-lit like mirror. Um, That mirror is the sickest piece of furniture in their entire house. I'm obsessed with it. Me too. It's so cool. I've never seen anything like it. I know. It like like, almost looks like 4D, 3D, like Alice in Wonderland. mm -hmm. Like you could go into it. Yes. It has depth. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know where she found that. Yeah. So cool. I know it's like a really expensive piece of furniture that it's probably like a one of a kind thing, but it's so dope. I love it. It really is. Well, you left, I think before, and I did as well, before they set up karaoke. Yeah, I did. I saw. Brock stayed though. Yeah, Brock (laughs) FaceTimed me. So my mom and I mirrored my phone and I put it on the TV and we felt like we were still at the party, just like watching the whole karaoke night. It was fun. So like, you know how like I always joke that like, hey, like you always talk about me doing mushrooms all the time on this yeah. podcast, but I rarely do them. Yeah. So you did them again. <laughs> as you all know, I'm on my drinking detox cleanse. I'm, I'm now on, I've added social media to that detox as well. But at that party, <laughs> there was, there was a little bit of mushrooms. Yeah. I had a cap, a small cap, you know, I forget like, which is more hallucinogenic, the cap or the stem. I don't know, but the cap, like I barely felt anything, which was great. Like yeah. I didn't want to, like it basically just relaxed me. It was like taking like a hit of weed or something. That's all it was. It didn't so you do anything like crazy. Seen things? I was not. Okay, then no. it's the stems because I've only had stems. I've never oh, had a cat. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, barely. It just, it was basically just like relaxing. That, and I was just laying like on the couch oh, so for like, nice. and it only lasted like 30 minutes to an hour. It was perfect. And it was just like cool because like I wasn't drinking. Yeah. And I honestly didn't need anything, but it was towards the end of the night and I was actually like feeling like a little, you know, not feeling great you know, about my life situation at the moment. And so I just took that and I felt amazing. But point of the story is, so when Brett and I left, we were both parked somewhat (laughs) close to each other. So we get to my car first and I'm like, you know what? It's a beautiful night. I want to keep walking. Let me walk you to your car. Yeah. And then I'll come back to mine. And he's like, okay. So as we're walking, we find this house like down the block. I saw that on your story. Down the block from Tom and Ariana's. And there was like lights everywhere. Okay. There's a cow, like a cow 
statue in the yard. So it was like, random. I was like, where did you go? You told me you were going home. And then I saw this street. on your Instagram. And I'm like, oh my God, did the mushrooms just kick in? Or does this house really exist? <laughs> I'm seeing cows and lawn furniture. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I saw that on your story and I was like, did she go to an after party? I was like, did the mushrooms kick in like so much that you were like, I can't drive. I can't go home. Like I'm going to someone else's house. And I was watching your story without volume. Okay. So I think then when I watched it again, you explained like, oh, I'm walking Brett to his car and I saw this. Right. So I was like, oh, okay, she's fine. I was just like, where is she and what is she doing? This is just a <laughs> house in Valley Village. And I guess it looks like this all the time year wow. round. But yeah, it was hilarious because I was like, wait a minute, is this really, am I really seeing this? And for you to like see a cow. I know. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, I'm going to have to check that out next time I go to. to their house. It's just down the street. Interesting. And it, was it like, from what I remember seeing your story, it was almost like, like Christmas or something, but like with like farm animals? Oh God, it wasn't It was like really Christmas. random, it but was it was just- like lights. All different color lights, like purples and blues. It wasn't Christmas like Who lights. just has like lights outside know. of their house? And then it was like decorated like Gnome's Cottage or something. Like it That's was- That's cool and creepy. It was- I'd love to meet the owner of that house. Right? We need to be friends with them. should go knock on their door. Yeah. Be like, what are you on? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what were you on when you decorated this? <laughs> yes. Oh, funny. Well, I'm glad that, you know, not drinking, you were still able to get a little- something. Yeah. You know, I'm just experimenting yeah. with life right now. What, but that's what, what works, I loved what about work. smoking weed back in the day mm-hmm. was because I've never been a big drinker, Yeah, but it's like, you know, just a little bit of that. You get a happy high and you're just like relaxed. I was less anxious. And I mean, I did actually have to kind of learn how to do that without weed. Like when I was dealing with the miscarriage, I did not want to go back to smoking, drinking. I didn't want to do anything. I was like, no, I need to figure out how to handle this on my own. So I was able to, it's mm-hmm. not a fun, but yeah. I miss weed sometimes. I like weed and I never really got it. I was never super into it. And the reason being is because like if we're out in social situations. Yeah, you like never smoked with me. I wouldn't just because it makes me super antisocial and Uh I don't want to talk to anyone. I will, if I smoke with you, it should be like way at the end of the night, right before I'm going to go to bed Uh, because I won't speak. I'll go in my own little corner. I don't want to talk to anybody and I just think. It's nice for like relaxing my mind and like putting me to sleep, but it's bad for social situations. So I was never like really big into that. So I would just drink, but like I don't even like drinking I really don't I feel so much better not even like yesterday I was at Disney and you know you can drink at California Adventure right oh right so I remember like passing by this group of girls and they were wasted in the middle of the day just acting like idiots and I remember like having the thought I'm like that will never be me again and it's this like empowering like happy thought where I'm like I'll never look like a fool because I'm drunk again yeah like I will never get to that and I keep having these thoughts where it's like I'm not missing it. More than anything, I'm just like so happy that I've made this decision. And it's not hard for me at all. So is it full like not drinking at all still or is it going to be just the hard liquor? I mean, going into this, like I said last week, like my intention was to just give up hard liquor forever and just do beer and wine. But because I don't want to drink anything for like this 30 day detox that I've Uh (laughs) self-imposed, it's I'm doing nothing now. So after the 30 days are up, I'll reassess. I mean, there's a really good chance I just don't even want it anymore. Okay. But we'll see. So for next week for the drinking and podcasting episode... Am I drinking and you're podcasting? Yes. Hmm. I That's taking be, a turn. I for sure won't be drinking <laughs> next week. I mean, I'm not, I'm not opposed to smoking. Maybe because I'll be Ooh, smoking. Ooh, I used to do that. I, I, but like I said, I don't like to talk when I there smoke. There was one so. time we even did a little more and we were like, whoa, and we podcasted. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Janet, and Demario. Oh, boy. We were not sober. <laughs> I was like trying to read like one of my ads and I was like all the words. I was like, whoa. <laughs> we're going to take a break. Speaking of, we'll be right back. If you guys are like me and you've invested in an expensive yet comfortable mattress, then it's silly not to put as much thought and care into the sheets you'll be sleeping on night after night. Bowl & Branch knows high quality sleep doesn't stop at your mattress. Their ultra soft organic sheets are transparently sourced and produced in safe air conditions. I'm telling you, you will feel a difference and know you are making one. I have them in white and it is like the crispest white. Literally, they look so good when the comforter is folded down 
They feel good for me. For Brock, I run cold. He runs hot. They are amazing. They're the best choice for anyone who wants comfort that lasts. So if you guys are looking for a new set of sheets, I don't know if you remember before, but Brock had ripped through some of our old sheets with his foot. And these ones are so strong. There is none of that happening. These sheets are buttery soft. They're lightweight in a 100% organic cotton sateen weave that's perfect for all seasons. And here's something cool that I just found out. They are loved by three U.S. presidents. I mean, how cool is that? Talk about sleeping presidential, am I right? <laughs> right now, you guys can try them worry-free for 30 nights with free shipping and returns. And my listeners get an exclusive 15% off your first set of sheets when you visit bowlandbranch.com slash Shay and use promo code Shay at checkout. That is bowlandbranch, B-O-L-L and branch.com slash Shay. Use promo code Shay for 15% off. I mean, we could try it. Maybe we'll have some like great insights or something. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Or it'll be terrible. I don't know. I'm happy to do nothing or we could smoke and we could experiment. Let's okay. See. So next week we are going to be doing a Patreon only episode. We're taking a week off from doing the normal podcast. We're doing a video only Jamie not drinking, Sheena drinking and podcasting exclusive episode that we're we're going to get a deeper look into Jamie's current situation. Do you want to give a little teaser of what to expect on that episode? Because we're not going to be here podcasting at all next week. So you'll have to tune into the Patreon to hear why we're not here podcasting next week and get right. a little taste of. Well, we just have, I mean, overall, we just have some announcements to make. Yes. On both ends. True. So we'll just leave it at that. Oh, <laughs> Wow. Okay. Do you want to say more? Say what you think I should be saying right now. You are no longer in a situation you've been in since Valentine's Day. There you go. Yes. More to come. But there's Next other week. things too and very exciting things yes, and happy good things. things. And speaking of good things and exciting things, I told you, and I can't give too many details, but I mm -hmm. just want to let you guys know that I'm so excited that a situation that we thought was good fell through regarding business. And mm -hmm. it turns out that something oh, better yes, has this. come along. I'm so excited for this for you. This is insane. This is the biggest, hugest deal ever in my life, I think. Yeah. And it's, oh, I wish I could say more. But When can you say more? Probably in like a month or two. Okay. Something has been in the works for about a year now, and I wasn't totally psyched about it. I didn't like the choice. The direction it was going. Or the direction. And everything that I had envisioned for it and had hoped for it has now come true. You manifested the it. The streaming network that it will be on, as mm -hmm. opposed to the previous network it was going to be on. Yeah. The content that it will be about is they're scrapping everything and starting over. I love this for you. And it's enormous. And so if I'm going to be announcing that my life has changed in a sad way next week, let me also include some happy news yes. with that as well. So, yeah. Yeah. There's always a positive side to things. Totally. And that's the thing where, you know, when things in any situation seem like they're not going the way you want them to, it's usually because because there's a better plan and there's always light at the end of the tunnel. A hundred percent. You guys, I totally recommend, I'm always recommending like weird, obscure documentaries. Yeah. This one is called Thoughts Become Things and it's not on like any major like, like streaming network. It's like the next level to the secret. Ooh. Okay. It's about the law of attraction and, and how everything that we think shows up in our life. Everything, every situation we're in, everything that happens, it's because we've had that thought first and it's like this unbreakable law. This just is how things are. So by watching this documentary, it just kind of like spells it all out. It's super like interesting and very like easy to understand. If you search it, thoughts become things. Like it's on this like weird app. On, yeah. I have, I use Amazon Fire Stick. I don't have cable, but the app is like Tubi, T-U-B-I that it was on, but it's free. Ooh. It was awesome. And like, that's what the guy was saying. He was like, you know, well, what about when, you know, I say like, I think about something and it doesn't come true. It's like, that doesn't mean it didn't come true. It means that these maybe bad things had to happen to get you what you right. really wanted to push you to that place that you really need. So it's so interesting. You guys, I totally recommend you watch it. If, ever, if anyone watches it, I will geek out with you on it. Uh, DM me. I am on an Instagram break for about two more weeks, but 
I will get back to you. So. How has that been for you? I mean, it's fine. Like, did you just delete the app? Did you it's, hide it in a folder? I didn't hide it. I didn't delete it. It's still on my phone. I just have willpower. really strong willpower. I really do. And it's like, if I decide I'm going to do something, I do it. Like with the drinking or like when I was six years old and I said to my dad, I'm not going to eat meat anymore. And he's yeah. like, you can't do that. And I was like, six Watch year old me. me. I was like, yes, I can. <laughs> and I never did again. You know, so it's like, I've never had an issue with like willpower, uh-huh. uh, you know, even like living in like Hollywood and like me saying like, I'm never going to do hard drugs. Like I've never done coke in my life. And like, God, how many times I know, have I been around it? That is so impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, if I, if I say I'm not going to do something or I'm going to do whatever I put my mind to, yeah. I'm able to do it. So, you know, with the Instagram thing, I only decided this a few days ago. Mm-hmm. I did accidentally, I, I meant to open a different app and I clicked on it one time in, in my detox and this amazing post came up. I was like, oh my God, this is a sign. That's so, why you accidentally yeah, clicked on it because you needed to see that. I screenshot it and I'm going to read it for you guys. Okay. Yeah. And or now? Yeah. What yeah. was it? You're talking about it. Okay. I mean, it's kind of long, so I figured we'd save it for the end. I mean, we can, but then what if you forget? And okay. then we like wrap the podcast and you're like, oh shit, I didn't read that quote that I wanted to read. <laughs> I feel like we do that often where we like True. think about saving something and then we wrap it up and then like I'll think about it tonight when I'm in bed. Like, oh damn it, we didn't do that. All right, bear with me guys. And if you don't want to hear this where you see it's going when I start reading, just fast forward <laughs> maybe like a minute. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read you guys the post and then the caption beneath. The caption is really long, but I think it's so amazing. And it's on this woman's site called Rainbow salt rainbow yeah Aww. and she does a lot of quotes that are amazing and I'm normally not a quote person I kind of think they're cheesy a lot but this one but sometimes you need to like yeah. see that yeah this one really struck something with me okay so the post is one day when you least expect it you are going to crash into someone who is going to be so soft and gentle with your heart and you are going to be so glad you kept it open you are going to be so glad that you continue to fight for it that you chose to believe it deserved more that's so true because that's Brock mm-hmm So the girl who wrote this, she then Uh explains that in her caption. Please just have the courage to let go of the people who leave your heart confused. That's Mm -hmm. so many girls. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my God. So true. Mm -hmm. Single Sheena. If if you have to ask, like if you're confused or you have to ask, or what is he thinking? Is this, does he like me? Like then the answer is, no. no, like like, you should never be confused. I used to make myself so available just Mm -hmm. like, because I thought like he'd like me more if like I was just like making everything so easy for him. F that. And yeah, oh <laughs> God, I, ugh. Yeah. Okay. Let go of the people who make you feel like you are compromising all that you desire Mm -hmm. and all that you hope for and all of the goodness and the beauty that you know exists in this world for a skinny version of love. Let go of falling in love with potential. Let go of falling in love with the idea of someone rather than who they truly are. Let go of the fears you have that keep you holding on to something that hurts, something that is so heavy, something that has only left you feeling misunderstood or unworthy or at war with yourself. Oh, it keeps going. Oh, it goes. Oh, I only saw the first screenshot. Sorry, it's three more paragraphs, guys. (laughs) Let me, I'll read faster. Let go of waiting for the people you have always treated kindly to treat you kindly. Let go of waiting for the people you have always treated with respect to treat you with respect. Let go of waiting for the people you have always chosen to finally choose you. Let go of waiting. Let go of holding your breath, just hoping that things change. Let go. Don't allow yourself to get comfortable existing in spaces where you know you deserve better. Love is not meant to hurt. Love is not meant to be given in bare minimums. Love does not require for you to be cooler or less emotional or less yourself for you to be worthy of it meeting you. Love chooses you in the good and the bad. Sounds like the better version of Corinthians for like wedding vows in 2021. Oh yeah. You know, like yeah. love is patient, love is kind, but it's like, you've heard it so many times. This mm-hmm. is like the And in the good age. and in the bad really strikes a chord with me yeah. because if someone can't stay with you in your bad moment, then uh-huh. they're not worthy of you. Yeah. So true. It isn't an almost thing. It isn't something you have to beg for. It isn't something you have to fight for constantly. Something that is always a source of pain and confusion and hurt. There is power in letting go of anything that is forcing you to let go of yourself. Don't ignore what you know in your heart. Remember, it is better to be alone than to feel lonely in what you're settling for. That is so true. Mm -hmm. It is better to be alone than try to fit your heart into the hands of someone who does not want to hold it. How Mm. sad is that? Yeah. (laughs) It is better to be alone than to fight for someone who is not fighting for you. Mm -hmm. Word. Truth. (laughs) It is better to be alone, to be your own foundation, than to spend any more of your time waiting for someone to see the beauty in what 
what you are giving them. You deserve good love. Promise you will let go of anything that does not feel that way. Promise to stand up for your heart. It also, I think, is better to be alone or not necessarily alone, but in a different situation that doesn't make you compromise things that you strongly want and feel. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, relationships are about compromise, of course, but like when it comes to like huge life things like, you know, having more kids or things like that, you can absolutely compromise for the person you love, but they also maybe shouldn't expect that if it's something that you like strongly want or don't want. Yeah. And to play devil's advocate on that, it's like also like maybe there's things that you thought weren't important that someone can make you realize aren't Mm -hmm. or some things that you didn't think were for you and your eyes have been opened up because you feel this new way because of this new person. So all of that to me is okay that if another person can like show you new thoughts and new ways of like looking at things, I love that. But also like if there's certain things that are important to you and that person doesn't think those things are important and they don't want to put in that effort just to make you happy. Mm-hmm. And they chalk that up to like, okay, you're just not compatible. It's like, even if you're just asking for the bare minimum and someone yeah. can't do that, and then they kind of like use that as a cop out, mm-hmm. you know, that's Ugh, the cop outs. That's not cool. I can't. <laughs> I know. So you got a new tattoo. I did. Which I haven't even seen in person yet. I, I just I will saw. Show you like an Instagram story snap where I couldn't even tell what it says. So where exactly is it? What's the meaning behind it? Okay, well, first of all, I pranked you and Brett in our good chat. It didn't, not for one (laughs) second. Yeah, I was like, oh, she's bored. I'm like, do I entertain it? And I'm like, I can't because it was like, it was so, had you not done the neck one and you just did like the, what's this? The collarbone? Um, yeah, what's that? Like, like decolletage or uh-huh. whatever. Then I might've been like, hmm, ballsy, but okay. But the neck tat, I was like, there's no way. I'm yeah. not even going to entertain this. You're just like wasting time right now. Well, that's exactly what I was doing because I was waiting for, so basically like when they put the ink I get, or stencil on you, you yeah. have to wait 10 or 15 minutes until they can start right. the tattoo. So the tattoo artist was like, you want to like fuck around and like just like do some other stuff like stencils? And I'm like, why? And I'm like, wait a minute. I could fuck with my friends. Yes. Let's do a neck tattoo. Let's let's do it all, right? So we did like this like really cool like moth with like a skull in it and then like this uh, lotus on top of the moth and then ivy underneath it. Yeah. And I was sending the you The ivy I would have believed. Right. But it was because it started with like the butterfly <laughs> and then the the ivy was added. I was like, first of all, the ivy's crooked. So I sure yes. as hell hope she is not for real. Where did she find this bootleg tattoo artist? And like, even the moth was crooked when he. Put yeah, it on. I mean, I will say, okay, there. I said there wasn't one second. There was probably one second where I thought that you were just like trying it out to see, like, oh, would I like a right. neck tap? Because I mean, you I'm not gonna lie, before. I kind of liked the way it looked. And what's hilarious is he reposted that. Yeah. And all these girls started DMing him, like, that's exactly what I want. Let me know how it turns out. Oh my out. god. Like, he got so much extra business, <laughs> and like, I may have started a, a female neck tattoo craze. Wow. In LA. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> and then when I announced, I was joking. There were a lot of people that were like DMing me like, oh, damn, that was badass. Yeah. (laughs) No, I mean, you have one tiny tattoo. So then for your next one to be a moth skull butterfly on your neck, I was just like, oh, God. The actual tattoo (laughs) is on my hip, the side of my hip. Okay. Kind of like my side butt. (laughs) You know what? That's a spot that I don't have one. I could get another one there. I I like this area. I Uh I spent a lot of time thinking, I was thinking maybe on my ribs, but then I'm like, yeah, that's played out. And then my arms. And I'm like, no, I like this because it's like concealed and it's not something that I want people asking me every day. Like, what does that mean? Ooh, you know, now I kind of want one there. I need to see this. It doesn't hurt at all either. Yeah. In that area. My, I mean, I have them everywhere. And the one that hurt the most was my index finger because the it's part of it was on the bone. Yeah. Yeah. I could imagine. But the other fingers, none of those hurt. None of these. I do want to do some more words or something on my upper inner like right inner bicep. bicep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I put it on my hip, which is a great spot. Can't wait to take pictures when it's healed. It's actually yeah. healing really well. I was freaking out the next day because it looked all thick and blurry and there were yeah, words I couldn't I was like, make Jamie, out. You have to, just because you checked someone's Instagram and it looks like they're great at, you know, tattooing skull moths on people's necks, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily good at fine lines for yeah. words. But thankfully, and it looks And do you see great. my ribs? I do. I learned my lesson the but hard I f- way. I feel like that blurring in but time. But look at the comparison. Yeah. Of, so I was, when I was freaking out that I thought yeah. that actually happened to me, it's called a blowout. Yeah. And basically it's like if there's an inexperienced 
experienced artist, like they go too deep is what happens. And then the ink gets into the fat and then that's why it spreads. Yeah. I'm going to probably remove this freaking, one. I was so depressed the next day. I'm like, can't something just go right for me <laughs> <laughs> this week? <laughs> but then the next but day. But it's it was, fine. It, was, it looks great. And it's just, it's lyrics to a song that, a song that I love. And it goes, let's unwrite these pages and replace them with our own words. And it's from a, a song by Rise Against called Swing Life Away. And it's so emo. So emo. But the meaning to that to me is that we all have these stories that we tell ourselves. I came into my re- last relationship with a story. Yeah, I'm um, from an abused relationship. I, I had years of domestic violence. I'm scared. I'm this. I'm that. I have all these flaws. I have all these issues. And like underlying all of that, which I'm finding through my therapy and stuff, is this idea that I'm unworthy. You know, because mm-hmm. of these stories that I've told myself about my past. You know, if like someone who loves me and is supposed to marry me and is engaged to me can abuse me mentally, that fucks with you. Yeah. You know, so I'm doing unfucking of my brain now. <laughs> I'm, I'm fixing the Love things that, that I didn't you. know I still needed to fix. So, you know, it's just basically saying like, no, like I'm going to rewrite everything with my own words, not these stories that I think something that happened to me meant this because it doesn't mean that. And I am worthy and I do deserve love. It leads me back to that phone call that I made to you after Danny and I went to Big Bear with Ivy and he met Ivy for uh-huh. the first time. And I remember just dropping Ivy off. I dropped Danny off, dropped Ivy off with my mom, got in my car and I sat and I went and like looked at this like mountain. <laughs> and I remember calling you and Brett crying. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm not meant to be happy and I'm scared and like Ivy is going to be too much for him and he's going to end up leaving me so I need to just end it now and I was so scared and, and I remember the words coming out of my mouth telling you guys like happiness isn't meant for me like I'm not yeah. supposed to be happy so I sabotaged a lot of stuff with that belief so I'm getting over it and that tattoo is like the first step Aww. more to come next week yeah <laughs> you're going to show the tattoo next week as well oh yeah that, totally well yeah yes. it looks great well I'm glad that it's not botched that mm-hmm. it looks good me too I want to get another one Lala and I have actually been talking about getting the girls' names on us. Cute. But while breastfeeding, I don't know if that's okay. So oh, probably not. I read an article and it didn't really say that it was bad. I'm going to ask, I don't know if I should ask my OB or her pediatrician, but I have her two-month appointment tomorrow. So I'm going to ask her pediatrician what he thinks if he's heard anything about that because I would like to get one, but I could also wait six months. I would say wait. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, sure I'm you like, can even just Google it. You know, it's not recommended recommended to get Botox, obviously. Mm -hmm. And that's something, a poison going into your skin. And ink, you know, that's Yeah, the body recognizes that as like a foreign substance. I don't know if it's considered a poison, but yeah, I have no idea. I don't know like how that works with like... you shouldn't. (laughs) If any of you guys know, please um, like leave a comment, slide in our DMs and uh, let me know. I feel like obviously the safest thing to do is to just not do it right now. But... If her doctor's like, oh, yeah, that's totally fine, then maybe I would. I don't know. I saw you went to dinner with Lala and Randall. We did. We went to Tom Tom. How was that? Um, It was fun. It was busy. We thought about bringing the girls, and then I remembered when you and I went a couple weeks ago, and I was like, wait, wait, so wait. So loud. No, I was like, Friday night. Oh, my God. So we were at their house. We did a little spa day. The guys did a scotch tasting, and then we went to dinner after. So we drove separately. We pull up to valet, and I just, I had a feeling, so it was like 8.40. I was like, watch, she's going to say that the fucking valet is full. So we pull up and we're behind their car and the valet is like, no, 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 no. Like shaking his head. No. And I was like, wait, I was like, we're with that car. And he goes, then can you call them? Cause their car won't start. And I was like, what? Oh no. And so Brock gets out and he's like, oh, I'll handle it. Brock jumps out, gets in the car and he's like, wait, this is so weird. I was like, oh, he probably accidentally took the key in with him. I was like, right. I'll call him. So I call Randall and he's like, what's up? Where are you? And I was like, we're behind your car. I was like, you're car's not starting. Do you have the key? And then Brock goes, he ran out of gas. He doesn't <gasps> have gas. Oh no. And Lala said when they got in the car, she was like, dude, like we should probably get gas. And he's like, we'll make it. Oh no. They made it to valet. <laughs> but then he was like kind of stuck. So then he had to go in neutral. Brock's pushing it. Lala was like, I'm fucking mortified that like <laughs> we're pushing your car out of valet. So then after Brock helps push the car, the valet was like, I'm still full. I was like, you're a fucking asshole. You know, we've had issues with that valet. Yeah, and before. it was the same guy. Annoying. I know. And the valet pre-pandemic were awesome. They yeah. knew my car. They would leave it in a good spot for me. I guess I was just spoiled. But this new valet, he's like, he's not a fan. They better so, recognize. Yeah. <laughs> then get this. So then we go and we're like looking for parking.
parking. We like everywhere is just fucking full. And Brock was like, I'm not gonna make you walk all the way from the library to Tom Tom. He's like, so I'll just drop you off. So he drops me off. I have both of our wallets in my purse. I walk up. It's all like new people at the front. And normally, you know, just kind of walk in because right there at the line, then like people were like asking for my picture. And I'm still, I'm I'm great with taking photos always. But now in a world that's back to normal and there's no masks and I'm not fully vaccinated, I'm still a little paranoid. And I like to, you know, sit in the corner kind of away from people until I feel safe. So a couple women like come up to me right away and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep my mask on. And I'm the only person in West Hollywood in a mask, mm-hmm. by the way. So I do that. The host guy at the front doesn't notice. And not that it's a big deal, but doesn't care. So then I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to get in line. My friends are already in, you know, I just walk in. So I walk in, he stops me and he's like, ma'am, I need to see your ID. And I was like, oh, oh, seriously? He's like, yeah, I don't know you. I haven't seen you here before. And I was like, oh. little humble pie for you. Okay. (laughs) So I pull out my wallet. I hand it to him and he goes, who the fuck is this? I handed him Brock's wallet. Oh, no. (laughs) So he sees like a bearded man and I'm like trying to use that as an ID. And then I'm like, but then people are taking pictures of me. And then I'm like getting like frustrated. And I'm like, I never, ever, ever will be like, I'm on the show. Right. But I had to because I was just like, now I'm like embarrassed. I'm like pulling out the wrong like ID. People are taking photos of me. I was like, we're going to be here all the time. I was like, what's your name? Like, I'm Sheena. I'm on the show. Like my friend's in this place and then Brett sees that like I'm like not getting harassed but he was just like why is Sheena like taking so long to come in and like digging through her purse he's like she's on the show she's fine and then he like pulled me in I was like thanks but I'm like I never do that yeah but it was just like when there's like so many people around and then like taking my photo and I'm like flustered I was just like I just want to go in and see my friends and sit in the back and I mean there's just so many new people working at the restaurants now that like you would think they should know but then they don't know and I'm not the person who's like oh you should know who I am by any means but when people are like pulling me for photos and like you see I'm clearly like flustered it was a lot so I don't recommend going there on a Friday night (laughs) (laughs) but the food was great um what did you get we got the spinach and artichoke dip Mm -hmm. which has this like crispy pita bread that's so bomb like I think some of that comes on the vegetable platter that you and I got so good we got cauliflower wings which are vegan and so so good. We got crispy chicken sliders. Oh my God. The goat cheese balls at Tom Tom. I'm sorry to say this, but they're so much better than Sir. What's the difference? They're like, they're a little bigger. You get four. Ooh, better yeah. than three. You get one more. Okay. And the cheese is like hot and almost just like melts in your mouth. Like it's like soft. Whereas like at Sir, it's almost more of like a thick yes. goat cheese. Yeah. But at Tom Tom, like it was just like melts in your mouth so good. That's amazing. Yeah, so. If I can beg the gods at Tom Tom to come up with a vegan goat cheese ball, you guys, I would be I mean, forever indebted to you. There's vegan cheeses. But so goat just, cheese is such an, a distinct they could do taste it. and they could flavor. Do it. If, if we at Sugar Taco can make those quesadillas, the cheese in that tastes like better those than are an actual dairy good. quesadilla, they can do it. I don't know better, but it's pretty They're damn better. close. I've, I mean. It's the best best vegan cheese I've had. I've never had vegan cheese that's mm-hmm. that good. Me neither. It's really good. And it's made from scratch. It's so like, I feel it's like, like queso-y. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the goat cheese thing could be done. It's not impossible. I mean, if they're 3D printing filet mignons, <laughs> exactly. you know, <laughs> anything is possible. So I implore you guys. It was so funny. I remember like months ago. Oh, no. It was after like the last season's premiere party. Remember, we went to Rocco's after. Oh, yeah. Party. That was a wild night. And then people were getting arrested. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember like somebody went, it was probably Tom and like some, I think he had like, one of the chefs from Tom Tom go up there with him uh-huh. and the chef goes because this is like before they expanded and they said we're expanding with Tom Tom and I could have sworn he said and we're doing an all vegan menu and I was freaking out I'm like this is <laughs> such a great idea Lisa Vanderpump loves animals this is perfect this is such an amazing statement and then you know came to find out like I misunderstood what he said and he said something like we're going to have an all new garden or all new menu but like he didn't say vegan oh <laughs> I mean they have vegan they have options few, they have a few options yeah yeah 
Yeah. I mean, a couple months after that, the world did shut down. So maybe they were planning on doing a whole vegan menu and then it just didn't work out. I don't think they were, but I'm trying to plant some seeds right now. Yeah. And when is listening, at least do a separate like little menu with, I mean, it's West Hollywood. You love animals. Like, come mm-hmm. on, let's do it. Have you eaten at Bottega Louie? I have been to the one in downtown LA, but not the one next to Tom Tom. It looks so Can good. Can we go? I would love to. It's The one in downtown is amazing. It's Ooh. legit Italian food. It tastes like real. It's not this like West Coast Italian. It's real Italian Yeah, food. it looked like it. Mm-hmm. Yum. We gotta have to try that. Yeah, and the it, the space itself is beautiful. Too. Yeah, it's really nice. I'm so excited it finally opened. I'm mm-hmm. waiting for that. So we had some questions. I know a lot of questions came in that were very baby centric, and from some of the recent reviews, you guys think that I've been talking about the baby too much. But it's kind of my life right now. You know, I'm like a full time. I'll throw in mom. some baby questions and they can deal. But I, it won't be all. But baby. one of them I saw was, "Do we have a snoo?" And we went against the snoo. I was actually talked out of getting that because. The Nanit monitor I have with the breathing wear wasn't compatible with the snoo wrap that you put the baby in. But also we have a baby delight one that can like unzip. So you can like have the baby sleeping next to you, but literally just like reach your hands in and pull her right out. And it's very breathable. It's safe. And I love it. So we went against the snoo. Cool. That was all foreign to me. I have no idea what the hell you just said. (laughs) Awesome. Okay. So someone asked, the Nick T wanted to know how is post-baby sex, but let me tell you. Still hasn't happened. Hasn't happened. Good little update. But I was going to tell this person to listen to last week's episode because we answered it then too. But nice update. You went to San Diego and still nothing. Want to know why? Sure. I got my period. Uh, That's bullshit. I am breastfeeding full time. But what my doctor said is he thinks it's because I just started a birth control pill that caused my period to start early. So yeah, wasn't going to do that on my white bed. Oh, okay. But to be continued. I am getting an IUD ordered next week. And I guess that's like effective immediately. But I heard that also fucks with your period. So I don't know. The first time post baby is not going to be when I'm bleeding. I can tell you that. Okay. Unless we're in a shower. The showers here are too small. Okay. What are you most excited about for the new season? Ooh. From Marissa. I'm so bad at remembering. I'm excited to see Brock. Honestly, like I think he is such a natural and I think that there's going to be a few episodes where people may not find him to be their favorite person, but we'll see a personal story come full circle and we'll really, really fall in love with him. And I'm just so excited for that part of it. And just to see like our relationship, because I genuinely feel like this is the first and only like mature, adult, supportive, fully transparent, honest relationship. Mm -hmm. Like with Shay, I mean, he was like my number one supporter and was an amazing person, but we had a lot of skeletons that I tried to hide and I didn't want to talk about because I wanted everything to just seem as if it was perfect. And then we all know what happened with the guys after that. So I'm just really excited to see Brock and I's relationship. And I know it's not Brock and I's. I just said that <laughs> because it bothers you. You, you heard the little like <laughs> things fire off in my brain. Like, yes. damn it, Shan. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing all of that. And we still have some exciting things coming up that so you'll exciting. probably see on social media. So stay tuned. But yeah, and I'm really excited to watch back James and Raquel's proposal because that was just fucking epic. That'll be a great episode. Oh, it's going to be so good. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, by the way, that was from Marissa Ned 23 I'm sorry. A lot of times when I read the questions, I never say the people's yeah. names, but I'm going to try to be better at that. Thanks, Marissa. She also wants to know about new cast members and will Jamie be appearing? Jamie does appear. <laughs> yeah. Jamie's got some cameos. Mm-hmm. Jamie's got some call times. Yeah. I like it. There are some new girls who you may see a little glimpse of at Brock's birthday party in my vlog that came out this week. And um, I really like the new staff. Wait a minute. You vlogged at Brock's birthday party? <laughs> yeah. You didn't see that? No. <laughs> yeah. I, I, know I handed I, you the camera I, at I one point. I recorded for when you guys were, when you brought him the cake. Yeah. I didn't see you doing anything else the rest of the time. Oh yeah. It's out this week. I'll have to watch it. Uh-huh. I guess I'm not in it. <laughs> um, I don't know if you are actually. I mean, where the hell am I? 
Yes. I was in the pool with Ariana for like hours. Well, yeah, you're in that vlog for sure because really? it started on the yacht. And then we did. I don't even remember you vlogging on the yacht. Yeah, Sheena. you were sitting with my sister. I don't remember you doing anything. Well, I did, and you're in it, and you look good. And I'm sober and everything, which is crazy that I don't mm-hmm. remember any. <laughs> you know what? All the times when I'm like, I don't remember that. Maybe I just have a bad memory. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. So if you have signed up for the Patreon, you'll see an extended vlog that also included Brock's uh, first Father's Day with Summer. Aww. So we have all of that from last weekend in San Diego. Fun. But the longer version is the Patreon only one. C Brown 33. This is my girl. She lives in Boston. We talk a lot. Oh, I want to go to Boston. Yeah. Number one on my American bucket I list. I love Boston. We have to go uh, I know. to a Red Sox I game. want to so Fenway bad. Fenway Park is like my it favorite is place ever. Top on my bucket list. Also, of baseball when stadiums. we eventually do our podcast tour, Boston is one of the cities. We 100%. Go to. Yeah. In Atlanta. Sure. She wants to know favorite thing about your friendship. Love you, ladies. Ooh. I love how trustworthy you are. I mean, there's a million things I love, but I know that I could tell you literally anything. I could type it in a very incriminating text message and it would <laughs> never go anywhere. I'm a and boss. I don't have that with a ton of people. There are very few friends that I feel like I could say anything and there's going to be no judgment. There's going to be honesty coming back and it's not going to leave that conversation. Yeah. And I mean, likewise, because the incriminating and embarrassing things (laughs) that I send to you, (laughs) there's very few people in this world that I would admit these things. Well, and what you need to do, I've told you this, you have to give a disclaimer if you don't want me to listen to your voice notes in front of Brock or like my mom. No, I have been. Because sometimes I'll just hit play and then I'm like, oh (laughs) shit, that's sorry. That's a private one, Brock. That's not for you to hear. (laughs) Or I'll be like, yeah, Brock can listen, but he'll think I'm an idiot afterwards. Yeah. That's fine. (laughs) Which we have one of those. We have another story about, can we say an exorcism? Oh, God. Yeah. That'll be next week on Drinking and Podcasting. So I I (laughs) got a psychic reading like a week ago from our girl Eden Sustin, who Mm -hmm. she's read you before, Brett, I believe. Yeah. She's done one or two with me prior. My mom. Oh, she did your mom too. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. She's great. What is her Instagram? Because I'm not on Instagram right now. I I don't even want to open it to Uh, look. But do you know offhand? uh, I need to find that. Okay. Maybe we could put it in the episode notes or something. Yeah. She's amazing. She's wonderful. She did it over the phone, but she is doing them in person now. But supposedly she was talking to my dad the whole time. And our reading was only supposed to be an hour and it lasted two and a half hours because he wouldn't let her stop telling me things. So got a ton of information. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there like Brock who are skeptics, don't believe in that kind of thing. So we are just- She actually changed her Instagram and now it's Eden HS. Okay. Yes. It was Talk Purpose Truth is her podcast that she right, has. Right. Yes. But it's Eden HS on Instagram. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, like some of you are going to think we're kooks for believing in that. And that's so, we're fine. saving that for the drinking yeah, and podcasting episode. Everything she told Stay us there. tuned next week on <laughs> Patreon. Yes. All right. Do you want me to read any more questions? Um, or are we good? If there's another good one, we can do one more. Oh, someone wanted to know our Enneagram types, but Sheena and I didn't oh, know Oh, I didn't what even know meant. what that was. I had to Google it. Yeah. And then it was like this long old test. And I'm like, I ain't got time for that. But we will be back drinking and podcasting next week. Maybe we do the Enneagram test. We'll do it before yeah. that. And then we can but it, I didn't have time for today. Are. I got a pickleball tournament to go play in right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, next week, like I said, we will not be here, but we have some exciting announcements to make on Patreon. And, and happy birthday to Ariana by the time this comes out. Yes. We have her party tomorrow. Yes. Happy birthday, bestie. We love and you. We do. We love you very much. And I love all of you guys. Thank you for listening. We will be back soon wherever you get your normal podcasts. But in the meantime, come check out our Patreon and hear all of our exciting announcements and crazy stories. Come on over. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening to Shenanigans with Sheena Shea. Download new episodes every week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Get over here, boy. I'm gonna make you mine. Yeah. Do you want it?